Superpod 2020, raising money for sport relief. Two days of great comedy and sporting podcasts. Desert Island Dicks. Sports Spiel. Life Goals with Theo Delaney. The Dredgeland Podcast Spectacular. And more. Saturday 7th and Sunday 8th of March at The Social in Southampton. And you can be there too. Free entry until 7pm and then ticket only from 7pm. Tickets available now at superpod.co.uk. If you can't be in Southampton, the whole event will be streamed live online on your smart speaker and on Facebook Live. Find Superpod UK on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and use the hashtag Superpod2020. For more information, visit superpod.co.uk. Olympic trap shooter Georgina Roberts is an athlete who knows what she wants. She wants to change the state of play, take her sport to new levels, and rewrite age-old gender-based stereotypes. For some people, shooting is considered a dangerous activity, not even a sport in some people's eyes, and it's certainly not a place for women. Except that's all wrong, and the 22-year-old Women of the Future award winner is on a mission to tell people that But having that ambition to transform the fortunes of a neglected niche sport is one thing. Having the belief in yourself is something very different. But that's what has emerged from Georgie's roller coaster 2019. The British shooter had to take time out from the sport. There was no training and no major competitions and that's because family came first. Her dad has been suffering from cancer and last year it spread. The 22-year-old took the decision to move back home, get a full-time job and help care for her dad. It's been tough, there's no denying it, but it has forced Georgie to focus on herself just as much as she has had to focus on her family. That has led to her accepting herself for who she is and taking huge strides with her personal development. Now, the Mintridge Foundation ambassador is ready to take on the Olympic challenge and she's ready to take on the world. Georgie, welcome to the podcast. It's been a long time in the planning really in terms of getting you on Um, but how is everything uh, two weeks before we both run a half marathon? It's panic stations Work is really busy, training is really busy, and training for a half marathon is really busy as well. It's keeping me on my toes. It's all just (laughs) happened in basically the space of like two months where everything's just gone into overdrive. Yeah, so I think we've been planning on the half marathon for quite a few months, but the kind of last month before before that we make it to the start (laughs) line has been a bit... Oh, this is only just around the corner. I need to find some sponsorship. <laughs> exactly. Likewise. Um, I mean, we'll get the fundraising chat sort of out of the way early doors because it is, I think, 17, 16 days away as we record. Maybe not even that. Yeah, possibly less. Yeah. Um, but um, for those who don't know, we're running the Big Vitality Half on the mm-hmm. 1st of March in aid of the Mintridge Foundation. Obviously, regular listeners, listeners will know a lot about that charity and their relationship with the podcast but also ambassadors like yourself and the work they do for the charity too um first off how is training going ahead of it it's going all right i wish i was doing a little bit more but i'm really comfortable that the you know on the day it's going to be absolutely fine um so work are really good at supporting me so i'm able to do a 10k on my on my lunch break at work um but it's i'm struggling to get more than that in with time constraints so yeah it'll be fine but I'm just looking forward to actually getting to be able to do more than 10k that's the thing it's factoring it all in with work and life Uh, yeah all those sorts of things yeah so my um where I live it's not very runner friendly there's no footpaths um it's very dark and dismal at the minute with the weather as it is so yeah it's it's only really possible when I'm here in the office that I can get stuff done. Exactly. Those 
few hours of daylight that we have to and actually crucial. use at the moment. I know <laughs> yeah. they're so they're so crucial. Um, and for anyone who wants to donate to your page, I'll put your page's link in the podcast notes. Amazing. Likewise, my page will go in the podcast notes as well. So I think I speak on behalf of both of us and the charity that any donations would be very, very w- uh, welcome and yeah. warmly received. Please be generous, guys. Please, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> on to then sort of the main discussion, really. And mm-hmm. that's you and your sport of shooting. Um, something you've been involved with for quite some time now, whether it's actually competing, blogging about it, um, being a board member on the Welsh Clay Target Shooting Association, Mm -hmm. and now you've got refereeing and coaching coming into the the mix as well. So a whole range of different things. But the last time uh, we met, so back in December now, Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things you mentioned was that you wanted to change was the perception of the sport and yeah. sort of the, the general stigma in society regarding the sport. Yeah. So what kind of stigmas are we talking about? I think it's it's been a really interesting road for me. So most people who I talk to about shooting go, oh, isn't shooting just for large, rich men in tweed shooting birds? No, no, no. Uh, you know, clay shooting is an Olympic sport. You know, we've got Olympic trap, we've got Olympic skeet, we'd have double trap. We are in the Olympics, we were in the Commonwealth, and hopefully we're about to be reintroduced to the Commonwealth Games as well. Um, so there is, there, there's so many dimensions to shooting as a sport, and people don't really understand that. Um, you know, there's a lot of women that shoot. You know, shooting's incredibly popular with women in, in most countries, like Italy and America. There are thousands and thousands of women who who take part who are fighting for a spot in the American team or in the Italian team but within the UK we kind of have um almost maybe a bit of discrimination um so it's a male dominated sport it's a man's sport it's a man's world you know until um this Olympic cycle men have always shot more targets than women because you know that's a man's thing men shoot more targets but it's not so, you know, way back in the early start of, you know, shooting as a competitive sport, women and men were all equal. And then it's only when kind of women almost started beating men that, that the world went, oh, no, we can't really let that happen. We need to have something that differentiates women with men. So we were never allowed to shoot the same amount of targets. Um, but now I'm really grateful that that's changed because we are, we are equals in terms of, you know, competitive shooting. And so I think it's done us the world of good. Um, It sounds like a sort of similar debate to say the one uh, looking for another example, say in tennis at the moment, as to whether why the men play five sets in Mm. Grand Slams, why women only can play three sets in Grand Slams, but both are capable of the same. It sounds very much sort of a similar type of thing. So, I I mean, how much more needs to change on the the female participation side of things in the sport of shooting? Because I presume there's still several things that need to happen for it to be properly equal now. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, I just mentioned that, you know, women are, well, they have, there's a lot less of us um, than men. And I think it's almost because there is that element of it's a man's sport, but it's not. We have so many, you know, up-and-coming female shooting groups like uh, Shotgun and Chelsea Bung Club, which is also the ladies' shooting club, the Femme Fatales, there's loads of people who are really trying to get women involved. So I know British Shooting are also, they're running um, a talent pathway and, a, and different types of academies, which are, which are really aimed at getting women into the sport and also young people's days. I know there's also a, a charity that's just recently been set up called Velos, and they're running a ladies day as well, trying to not just poach women from other shooting disciplines and, and try and get them across to Olympic disciplines, but also just to go hi, you, you're going to really enjoy this day. We've got a lot to offer. We've got the best coaches in the world. You know, we've got some great technical advice. We've got sports scientists, um, so nutrition, sports psychologists. Just come and have a day out. Just You'll see how much you enjoy it. Because I think it's really popular with Hindus as well at the minute because people are starting to understand that you, there's so much more to it than just men smoking cigars, pulling trigger. But, you know, it's... We need up and coming women or else, you know, the level of women we have at the minute, we're just going to get to a point where we don't compete anymore and there's going to be no one to replace us, which is a really, really scary prospect. So I think 
one area that we kind of need to target the most is female juniors because they can they have so much to offer us in terms of obviously they're still juniors but they're going to have the access to the world stage at a junior level and then they can work up into the senior level and hopefully one day become the champions i mean you mentioned that being a, a scary prospect is not having that next generation if you like of yeah. female competitors is that a risk that it could potentially happen i mean are we or people in shooting are we sort of neglecting that side of things i think shooting is a very neglected sport just in terms of i know that a lot of people think guns are dangerous and shooting is dangerous and they don't see it as a sport and i think there's if you think about it in if you left a shotgun standing against the corner of a room it wouldn't jump up and shoot itself. It wouldn't go off. Someone needs to pull the trigger. And so shooting isn't dangerous as long as people like people who are safe and they're capable and they're responsible are the people that are competing and shooting. Um, so I don't think, I, as long as people understand that, they'll know that it's not a dangerous sport and they'll be more willing and, and interested in taking part in it. Um, I think it's just how we convey that to people. But I think it's stopping them from, say, introducing their their children or their wives to the sport, potentially. And actually, shooting as a sport is under threat because, you know, Double Trap was taken out of the Olympics because of equality. There was no women's event. And the women's event was taken out of the Olympics because there wasn't the right or enough participation and so we didn't just lose a, a women's discipline, we lost the men's discipline and the whole discipline was taken out. And so we can't let that happen again. Otherwise, we're going to have we're going to have no sport. And essentially, it comes down to addressing that participation issue in the first place to avoid that happening. Yeah, absolutely. How do you is a very big question, but how do you change those perceptions regarding the safety of the sport and maybe the old historical view that it is? a posh sport or a man sport? It's a really hard one because I know there's a lot of people trying different ways, but it's just, you know, we're modernising. We need the sport to modernise. We need innovation. We need to revolutionise the shooting sport, which is, is easier said than done, but at the same time, we've got better access to technology. We've got social media now, and it's just, you know, marketing ourselves and getting ourselves out there and saying, hey, this is what we do. This is who we are as a sport. This is what we want to achieve. And this is how we can help you achieve those same things. Um, it's just how we go about doing it and also just getting more and more people to shout about it because we need to. We need to, We need people to step up and go, hey, we're here, come and have us, you know? And I mean, your role is sort of inspirer, innovator, because I, I'm going to say this as I'll speak to someone who is now a Women of the Future award winner mm. from back in 2019 in the Thank sport you. category, which is rather <laughs> apt. Um, I mean, first off, getting that recognition must be kind of weird, but quite proud in itself. And then is that something you can use to take on this role and trying to make the differences that you're talking about? I absolutely hope so. So that award was so special to me because I really didn't expect to win it. Um, so I remember I walked in and everyone's given a brochure and the women that I was up against are absolutely incredible and you read their achievements and you kind of go wow I'm just you know little old Georgie from North Wales and it really puts stuff in pers to perspective like well oh, I don't really feel like you know I've got much to offer in, in comparison to these people so for people to have really believed that actually you know what she's trying to do for shooting is really powerful it's a real tearjerker because it's it's nice to get rec recognition for something that is is very behind closed doors um so a lot of people don't see what you know what what's going on in in the shooting world so that was really special um I, but it's opened a lot of doors for me already in terms of working with new in, like new people within our industry but also in terms of writing so i've started writing for um, Clay Shooting Magazine, which is really getting my story across and why this stuff is really important. Um, but also for the British Association for Shooting and Conservation, which has been really, really helpful. So I've kind of taken on the, a role as um, clay shooting guru um, to try and educate people from different areas in shooting about what clay shooting is and why competitive shooting is important. Um, 
but I'm I really appreciate those opportunities but at the same time I'm really hoping that more doors are going to open in the future um, because although it's still important to educate people who were already shooting we need to educate the general public we need to have a bigger outreach if we want to make a bigger impact um, so that's definitely going to be one of my focuses for 2020 and I'm really hoping that award is going to help me get there exactly it gets you into new places and there's a whole different um variety of ways really that you can get that message across one being sort of the the mentoring and coaching side of things which i know is a big part of your involvement in shooting now mm -hmm. um but then i also mentioned the unlocked campaign that yeah. followers of the women's sports trust mm -hmm. will obviously know and obviously we're very big on promoting women's sport where we can on this show and it's, it's something that we've been doing right from when we started so say a, a campaign like that which has such a wide reach that must be a big step forward in trying to transform some of the things that you're talking about. Yeah, Not absolutely. just in shooting, but sport in general. Yeah, it's, it's huge and it's really important because I know there's, there's a lot of people who I've spoken to um, who have children and whose children didn't realise that sh um, like sport in general, but especially shooting, can be feminine. Girls can do sport. You know, it's not, it's not a man's thing. Everyone can, you know, sport touches people who you know elite sports down to people who you know you know poorer areas perhaps and it's for everyone it's, it doesn't matter who you are or what you have it's you can get onto the track you can run you can kick a ball you can you know pull the trigger it's it is something for everyone and it's so important especially you know younger people I know that's the work that the Mintridge Foundation is also trying to do but getting people when they're at a good age and saying no 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 you can do this we believe in you, you know, this is who you can be. And people do identify as sports people now. And that I think that's really, really important. So um, my mum's a head teacher and she recently came back from school and had told someone um, that rugby is not just for boys, rugby is for girls too. And so I, n I never played rugby at school, but this little girl came back into my mum's school and said, I just joined my local rugby club and she is what seven or eight years old and that made me really emotional that it's just one thing that one person can say can inspire a you know a child an adult a man a woman to go and take part and go and do something and then it's okay but it's just that initial you know you can do that that's really like oh i can do this i can do anything and then people really buy into that and they believe that and that's really important it's, it's having that extra voice really in your corner yeah. to, to convince you and to, yeah, to push you in the right direction yeah, yeah that that's the right way to go about it and yeah something we've banged on a lot about on this podcast that sport is <laughs> ultimately for everyone yeah um essentially why this show exists in the first place make sure you follow sports spiel on social media search for sports spiel pod on facebook twitter instagram or on LinkedIn. Um, moving on then to sort of a, a different topic, and that's more, say, the, the mental health side of things and the mental health side of things in shooting. Um, to put a bit of context in this, last time we met was at the Mintridge Foundation training days back mm -hmm. in uh, December now. Mm -hmm. And there were a few of you that, a few of the ambassadors that were asked to get up during a workshop and, and basically talk about yourself. Mm -hmm. But from a sort of emotional standpoint and a, a difficulties that you'd had um, or past experiences that you had mm -hmm. um, standpoint. And you mentioned that the last year had been quite a roller coaster year for you. Um, and I, th I think you brought in sort of the general mental health side of things from shooting and how it's quite difficult still for people to be open and talk about those yeah, things. Sure. So, I mean, do you mind sort of briefly taking us through what happened to you last year, but also how you've managed to build yourself back up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, 2019 was a really, really big year for me in, in many ways. Um, less so about my own personal shooting career, um, but I kind of took, took some time away. I still shot a few competitions, but I didn't do any training. I didn't go to any of the, you know, the big international competitions. Um, but my dad's been diagnosed with cancer and he's 
had cancer for a, a few years, so that was nothing new, but his cancer had spread. Um, so I kind of, I got myself a full-time job, which is a real eye-opener um, for, you know, for anyone. But in terms of trying to fund my own shooting, um, take that weight off, off my parents, because I'm an only child, but shooting's still a very, very expensive sport. Um, uh, like I said, my mum's a head teacher, so she's got a, you know, a big full-time job that, you know, it's very stressful. Um, and she is doing an amazing job. She's doing the best she can, but there's still only so much that you can do. Um, so hopefully she sees that anyway, but I've been trying my best to um, kind of ease the stress a little bit. Um, I moved back home, got a full-time job, um, tried to help support my dad. Um, so he's had brachytherapy, radiotherapy, hormone therapy, and now he's on chemotherapy. Um, so he's doing an amazing job. He just, he sees it more as an inconvenience. But watching someone go through that whole process is really quite hard. Um, but everyone's been really, really supportive. Um, work especially people within British Shooting, because there's not that many people know what actually has been going on behind closed doors. Um, so that's, it's been an eye opener. Um, so it's also been really good for me because I kind of took some time out to focus on me because seeing someone go through that kind of, it does make you more aware of, you know, there might not be a tomorrow. Just do it now. There might not be a next year. Um, so I, I focused on myself and my fitness. So obviously I signed up for a half marathon, um, which has been really good for me because mm -hmm. running has actually completely changed my mindset. It's working on little goals that add up to a bigger picture. And then all of a sudden you're there at your end goal and you need to, <laughs> you need to set another one, which is really cringy as it sounds. It's changed my life actually. Um, and having some time away from shooting has made me fall even more in love with shooting because now when I go shooting, it's I'm having such a good time. I am so happy to be here. This is not a really hard training day. This is, I'm so excited to be here. This is more than just shooting. This is just me and my happy place. Um, and, and that's what I found with coaching as well is that actually I'm seeing you know, my goals changing because I want you know the peop to people I'm coaching to do well which is really really important but also it's made me look at shift like look at shooting in a different way as when I go training now I don't want to be a hypocrite I don't want to tell them one thing and, and me not do that so I know there's a lot of people who have different opinions and you know being a coach and an athlete um who say you shouldn't do both but actually I'm not coaching people that are trying to you know be my competitor they're not you know, I'm I'm trying to help grassroots sport. I'm trying to help those people who are going to be the next generation of athletes that I talked about earlier. Because if we don't have people supporting them, we don't have those athletes. And it's just trying to have let people have a good time, but in a safe environment. Um, but yeah, that's definitely also built my mindset for my own shooting, and it's kept me busy as well, which is definitely <laughs> something that's needed at this point of my life. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kept me going and it's, it has really helped because this, earlier this year, so the end of January 2020, I went to my first international competition. So I went to the Malaga Grand Prix in Spain and um, I made my first international final and I won gold. And for the first time I've been in a, an international senior final, it was a bit, you know, twitchy bomb if I'm honest. I was so nervous. <laughs> um, but yeah, to come out with a gold medal was something really special and it, it meant a lot for my dad as well because I think it showed him that he feels like an inconvenience to other people um, he doesn't want people feeling sorry for him he doesn't want to feel like you know oh you don't need to take me to chemo no I, I do I need to be there for you um, and so now he's like oh it's okay because looking after me hasn't stopped her from doing what she wants to do because he would never ever want me to let my shooting suffer as a result of helping with his cancer Exactly. Um, I mean, congratulations first off for for that gold medal as well, because it's a great achievement in itself. But I think a lot of people can relate to what you've just said, sort mm -hmm. of, because when that the big C does happen or does happen to someone that you care about, it it does completely transform sort of your outlook on life. Mm -hmm. But it it takes some time to it get does. there as well. Yeah. But especially to be okay with it, because even now, like I can feel my voice shaking, and it's something that we've been dealing with. What well, it was kind of. A bad, a bad year, um, but you know it's, it's been around for a few years. But 
it it does shake you to the core and it makes you appreciate stuff a lot more exactly and i mean if we're talking from the sporting side of things it also shows how important it is to find sort of your true motive mm. for that sport and it's not about the medals and the glory it's about you just loving the sport because that is your happy place yeah and i suppose sometimes it can be a little bit you can get a little bit lost in that maybe the success side of things if that's something that happened to you yeah. and you sort of had to refine the reasons that you got into the sport in the first place mm. um and obviously shows that the coaching side of things and the giving back is another avenue for you to sort of channel your, your thoughts really mm-hmm. absolutely and is, is that something you'll you you want to sort of speak out about a little bit more in the future or or basically trying to push how important that's been for you and coaching and coaching and but also being happy with yourself as well managing oh. yourself being happy with yourself is one of the biggest things that it's it's not just affecting people within sport but within life because in in terms of sport i remember reading a quote and i, I can't remember who it, who said it but if you're not truly happy within yourself you're already on the back foot because when you stand up you know if you stand on the peg next to someone who is truly happy within themselves they're always going to have that edge that advantage because there's going to be no second guessing am I good enough to be here you know do I deserve to be here it's I deserve to be here I'm happy I've put in the work I am ready for this this gold is mine and it's always going to be that battle and so until you're I'm Georgina Roberts and I shoot Olympic trap and I'm going to take over the world. You know, it, there's always going to be that difference. And it, but it's the same with, you know, within business, you need to know who you are and you need to be happy with who you are. And I, I cannot scream and shout enough about taking care of yourself. And, you know, it's not just drinking enough water and getting enough sleep at night, but it's okay. I'm Georgina and I like sport. So I don't need to pretend to be someone I'm not this is who I am and people need to accept me for who I am and if they don't I don't care that's who I am so yeah it's a battle but it's a battle worth having yeah exactly and that like I say I think there's loads of people that can relate to that I mean myself I can relate to that a lot Mm -hmm. as well in that no journalism for me is part of what I am but also my fencing as well was part of what I am as well so Mm -hmm. it's basically accepting yourself for who you are uh, and for anyone who may be having that sort of where you want to call it an identity debate in their head, I mean, do you have any advice for how you sort of managed to get yourself into that position where you were accepting of yourself and where you didn't care what other poor people thought and to care about yourself more than anyone else? Yeah, so I've, well, whilst I was at school, I was never bullied, but I was always very different. So I was the really sporty one. So I know when I was at school, there was a lot of, um girls that didn't like getting sweaty so they wouldn't try in PE um and I was always the one that was beetroot red in the face sweat dripping off her go 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 let's do this and then I was like "Mm, okay should I not be doing this because no one else is doing it but no like I absolutely should have been and if anything looking back I wish I would have tried you know even harder because I know there's girls that go well boys don't find that attractive they do. Boys find, you know, a, a woman in sport really attractive because they're confident, they're passionate about what they want to do. And what's what's not more sexy than a woman who's confident in her own skin that's doing what she loves, you know? Exactly. Um, and that kind of takes me on then to sort of one of the other points I wanted to talk about. And it's actually based off of what I think it was Marilyn Okoro at the train day said about your Instagram page <laughs> and <laughs> how she enjoyed watching and seeing the content that you were putting on there Mm -hmm. and this kind of touches to what we were talking about before about getting women into sport and one of those barriers is that image that perception of being sweaty and and working hard and that maybe not being what you actually want to aspire to and I look at the role social media plays about how everyone has to have this perfect image and it can affect so many people whether it's boys men girls women and I suppose Instagram pages like yours and other sports people are basically the pages that are fighting against that mm. general perception. The guts the, and the glory. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's something you, you kind of consider in your social media activity or in the general messages that you're putting across, whether you're doing mentoring or anything like that. Do you know what? It's it's not something that I've really thought about. It's 
I I love Instagram. I think Instagram's a brilliant avenue for shouting about messages that you want to get across. Um, my Instagram's just my love for shooting. And every now and then it's me wearing a nice outfit, going out for a meal, um, and then a bit of food. But it's, I think, nine times out of ten, it's shooting-related post. And it's just because I love shooting so much. And I'm I'm just a really... I'm a real person. If I I might if I'm yeah, red in the face, sweaty, going for a run, I that's me. That's who I am. And I don't think people post about failure enough. Because when you look at an Olympic gold medalist, then you know, life's not all petals and primroses. There's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that have gone into that. It's not just the glamour of picking up a medal and a bunch of flowers at the end of the day. And it's just showing like the hard work and the dedication and the real life that goes into that. The training, the fitness training, the what I'm eating that day, you know, what you know, what life is throwing at me at the minute. And it's not all pretty. It's not you know, you can turn up to a competition and so you know, my, my targets when I'm shooting are wind affected, rain affected. I freeze outside, you know, I, sh- I, I compete in salopettes, in, in skiing salopettes because it's cold. Um, so, you know, I'm not afraid to post a picture of me covered in mud on a shooting range because that's me when I'm happy. And there's so many more elements to shooting than, you know, just posing with a nice picture in a shotgun. So I think people need to see that. And something we've talked about um, a few times is that impact of social media and seeing both sides as well. Is that something we as maybe a society need to take into account more as the failure side of things and the mm-hmm. down days or the tough days rather than just everything is perfect because it, it can help fuel, I suppose, people's own inner monologues mm-hmm. in that their life might not be as perfect as some of the people they see on Facebook or, or Twitter or Instagram. Mm, I think people need to talk about failure more because I don't think failure isn't failure failure is a step towards success and it's just and it is a lot of little you know steps of failure that build an Olympic gold medal or a Commonwealth gold medal or you know whatever it is whether it's just you've met a goal you have to like you will fall down before you eventually get back up and it's a getting back up that will get you to there but I think people don't see that when they see um people's you know social media is I want to be like that or it's it's really easy to get sucked into into like a false life because people don't talk about you know I had a bad day today it's you know today was amazing today I did this this and this and then it's you know a month two months before the next post so you know what you know what's happening in those two months you know real life and people need to talk about real life more so often we see it is you know you can have your gold medal success and then two months later down the line you've got another gold medal success but what's mm-hmm. happened in that time there's a lot of blood sweat and tears to actually get to that point that doesn't get shared yeah and that kind of segues into um asking about the Mintridge foundation um the charity that you've been an ambassador for for quite a while now obviously we're really close to that charity as well and i suppose those are part of the key messages that you and as an ambassador have a role in sharing with children that you're mentoring or those that you're giving talks to is that part of why the work that charity does is so important? Is that it is helping children sort of accept that and come to terms with that and helping build them up for the future? Absolutely. It, and it's it's not just that, but it it educates them, but it also gets them engaged. They want to do more, whether that's, you know, say, say Marilyn goes in to talk about running. It's not just impacting them, you know, it's inspiring them to get involved, not just in running, but in sport, but also to get their friends and family involved. And I think that's the biggest thing, because even if it is, you know, we get up, we go for a family walk, it's exercise, it's engaging, you're spending time together. But then again, if you are if you want to go and play netball, like Pamela Cookie, you can't play netball by yourself, grab your friends, grab your family, grab anyone, like, come on, let's go and have a game of netball. And so it's not just that one person that that speech is, like really coming to it's the people that they surround themselves with as well which is really important i think one thing for shooting is um obviously it's quite a niche sport 
So it's educating people about what shooting is and what we stand for as, you know, athletes and shooters. So I think that's incredibly important as well, especially for me. But there's loads of different aspects. So I know the ambassadors, when we go to ambassador training days, we learn a lot, not just about ourselves, but about, you know, child protection and safeguarding. And so as a charity, the Mintra Foundation don't just help the mentees, they're also helping the mentors and the sporting ambassadors. So, you know, I hats off to everyone at the Mintred Foundation because they are doing great things. And for such a small charity, like the partners that they've got, the people involved with the sport, the, the ambassadors that they have, you know, they've got a very, very bright future in front of them. Absolutely. And when we saw firsthand at the training day, training days back in December just how much everyone bounces off each other and how much yeah. you all learn from we each other a, as well. We have a really really good group we are really lucky. <laughs> I mean, it was really really good to see when we were up there as well just how quickly everyone just everyone is thinking in the same way and thinking along the same lines and it just brings everyone together which mm. you don't often get that no. I think when you bring a lot you know a big group of people together. You're listening to Sportspiel the players podcast. Moving on then to sort of more about shooting again, and this is based a little bit on what you just said there. What does, in your mind, shooting stand for? What should that sport stand for in society? Fun, competition, engaging, inspiring. There's so many words that I could use that shooting means, well, for me at least. But I think it should be more than shooting. It should be a good day out with friends, which it is. It can be a competitive sport, which it is. It could be a day out on a Saturday, which it is for so many people. And it, I just, I, I know that I'm going to commit myself to trying to get that to reach as many people as it can, because we do have a lot to offer as a sport. You know, if you want to be a world champion or an Olympic champion, you can do that. If you want to have a hen do, you know, doing something a little bit different, you can do that as well. And you can have Saturday fun. There's just so many different sides to it that people don't think about. Because I know, I know, you know, if you play football, that's competitive and that's a bit of fun. And, and shooting's no different. But people don't talk about shooting as much, so we don't get as much attention. But I'm really hoping that as many people that I speak to, I really hope that they... You know, go and oh, did you did you know about shooting? Did you know that you could go and do this? Oh no, I didn't. Oh well, let's go. Let's go and do that because that's how we're gonna kind of reach people. So yeah, it's gonna be a good year trying to get <laughs> trying to achieve <laughs> that. But yeah, that's my focus. Busy year, but yeah. But it sums up what you're saying is that you need to get away from the stigmas that we were talking about right at the start and that and broaden people's horizons really about what it can be. Yeah. From your own competitive point of view mm -hmm. i imagine obviously reaching an olympics is the, the dream the, the ultimate yeah, aim absolutely. i suppose paris i'm coming for you <laughs> that's, what I, that's what i was going to say is in what happens now because obviously what's happened in the last you know 12 months beyond that means sort of tokyo is a little bit you know, yep. parked yeah. to the side at the moment yeah. but what happens between now and paris 2024 is a lot of for hard that work. for yeah. that to be a reality yeah a lot of hard work um a lot of determination a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but it's doable and I will be there. I am absolutely determined to be there. Um, but I'm also really lucky that there's a lot of longevity within shooting. So I can keep shooting until I'm 70 if I want. There are people who are still meddling at world level who are in their 50s. So, you know, it's not like, you know, I know uh, gymnastics, they have a very like high turnover of athletes because your career is quite short. But with shooting, that's the complete opposite. We can keep going and keep going and keep going. And that's something I really, really intend to do. Exactly. I mean, you talk about gymnastics and Grace, obviously, yeah. having spoken to her. And she was retired at 23 and mm -hmm. it's sort of finding your next path. So I suppose you're in the fortunate position that shooting can be a part of your life for the foreseeable future, really. Yeah. And there's a perfect avenue for you to get your messages across. Mm -hmm. um, last word then before I wrap up um, should probably go to the Mintridge Foundation um, since that's essentially what's brought us together and it's yeah. why we're running through the streets of London in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, 
I mean, where where do you see that that charity going, and how important is it that people like us um, keep supporting it, whether it's through fundraising, donations, things like that? They can't do it without us. They are a small charity, but a small charity that brings so much to shooting, to sport, to women in sport, to men in sport, to children in sport, to anyone. And they're doing such a great job. And they have, I, I spoke about the partners they've got earlier. They, you know, their partners are incredible. So they are a, they're small and mighty charity who are, have, have started to get fingers in a lot of different pies who and meeting people who can help them in different ways and so seeing the Mintred Foundation slashed across newspapers is amazing and it's happening. Alex Wallace, our saviour of a lady and she's the managing director and founder of the Mintred Foundation is doing an amazing job. She also won the Women of the Future Award and sports Woman of the Year Award, am I right, for yeah, grassroots sport? That was, that was when we met her, was the week before she won that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm so gl- like glad and I'm so grateful that she is being recognised for all the work that she's doing um, because she is doing absolutely an, an incredible job. Um, but she's not just helping, like I said, the mentees, but she's also helping the mentors in the sports as well. So she's doing a lot for shooting. So they've partnered with The Perfect Clay, and we've actually got a date coming up soon in May, um, which is going to be me offering some coaching to, to those who come along and support that, which is going to be incredible because it's not just going, hey, here's a fun day and it's going to it's going to raise money for charity, but also, go, hey, this is what shooting is. This is what shooting's about. And let us show you how you can help you within that. Um, so they are they are going to do amazing things because they've they've had over, I think it's over 140 programs now that they've you know they've run with different schools and sports clubs and they're really making a difference to the difference to the lives of the children um, and the young adults that take part in these days but they're also offering a huge platform for ambassadors to go hey this is who we are and this is what we've achieved this is what we want to achieve and and this is what our sport's about and that's so crucial it's so crucial exactly and at events like that are the perfect way of of bringing in everyone and putting across the messages you're trying to put across but also doing great things for the charity too so yeah basically benefits everyone and a perfect charity really organization to put across those messages that are needed essentially yeah, absolutely. throughout I think, the country i think another thing that's really important is obviously they've got like nearly 40 different ambassadors from maybe 28 different sports and when we all come together to do those ambassador training days, we're also like-minded. We want to achieve amazing things. We want to help people. And when you're with these people and you're bouncing ideas off them, so I'm, I'm very close to Marilyn Okoro. You know, she's really close to my heart. I, I love that lady. And so when you're bouncing ideas off them and they're supporting you, and you know, if you're having a bad day or if you're feeling anxious about something, you know, Marilyn will be the first person to be on the phone no, girl, you can go and do this. You're amazing. You're incredible. You're doing amazing things. You can you can achieve anything you want. And it's it's people like the people that are involved in the Mintridge Foundation that you really need on your side, especially when you're trying to achieve, you know, equality in shooting or, you know, you're trying to help promote well-being and mental health. These people are the people that are going to stand alongside you and go, I want the same things as you. I'm going to help you achieve them. and But actually keep to their word and really support you in doing that. Exactly. A lot to say about the mindset of the people who are on board as ambassadors and Absolutely. behind the scenes as well. And mm. Marilyn, as anyone who knows, listen, who listened to our podcast at the start of the year with her and Laura Sugar on it, can mm. I appreciate exactly what you're saying yeah. about how she's always there and just has so much energy. She is an incredible woman. Mm-hmm. And exactly. if you don't follow her on Instagram, you absolutely should because she's very inspiring. Definitely should. Definitely should. <laughs> and on all social media, really, because she does put a lot of positive stuff out there that mm-hmm. people essentially need to hear. Yeah. Um, and with that, I better round this off. Um, in terms of competitions, is there anywhere we can see you next in the near future? Yep. So I'm off to France in April and I will be showing my face at a few different internationals in Italy later on in the year as well. Should be good to see. Mm-hmm. And onwards to Paris 2024 as well. Mm-hmm. Look see forward to seeing that. <laughs> well, Maybe not me actually competing. <laughs> you can find me in the spectator stand or something like that. <laughs> but, I mean, I'll see you in two weeks. 
Perfect. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you for Georgie. Um, like I said, throughout a lot of important messages, particularly about the changing perceptions, getting the women's side of, into the sport as well, and particularly the mental health side of things, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people can relate to, regardless of what background they come from. No, so absolutely. thank you so much for taking part. And if anyone does want to get involved with shooting, let me know. I will share my social media, my email address, and don't be afraid to get in touch. Likewise, we'll put your website into the, the show notes as well. So Amazing. everyone can click through there. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. A huge thank you to Georgie for coming onto the podcast for what has been one of our most wide-ranging conversations on the show, but also some hugely important topics were covered. Another plug from me, if you hadn't already gathered, that both me and Georgie are running the Big Vitality Half in London on March the 1st in aid of the Mintridge Foundation. Both of our fundraising pages are linked in the show notes of this episode and any donations would be so very appreciated. It's also a huge thank you to the Mintridge Foundation as ever for their work and their help in organising this interview. Time for some quick housekeeping now and March the 7th is a big day for the podcast as we will be doing our first ever live show at Superpod 2020 in Southampton. We are on at 8pm on the Saturday night. Tickets are available on the Superpod website. Again, the link is in the show notes. All of the proceeds for this two-day podcast event are going to Sport Relief. So it's a very worthwhile cause and there's plenty of other shows that are taking part in this fantastic event. We also have a sporting guest joining us that night for a Q&A session with the audience. Who that person will be is going to be revealed early next week. If you can't make it to Southampton, don't worry because the event is also being live streamed. But obviously we would love to see people there if you can make it. To round things off, Please spread the word about our show on social media and on the podcast listening apps of your choice. It helps people find us the more you talk about us and ultimately we want these fantastic athletes to be heard by as many listeners as possible. Do follow us on social media. All of our handles are Sports Bill Pod and make sure you are all subscribed on the podcast listening platform of your choice. That's it from me on this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next time.